everyone and welcome down to episode number eight of the Down South Photo Show with me, Brendan Waits, and my good mate, Cam Blake, down in Hobart Town. Good evening, uh, good evening our time, Cameron. Mm. G'day, mate. How are you going? Very, very well, thank you. Uh, shivering a little bit. We've had some pretty icy cold yeah. weather down here in Ocean Grove. How about you? Yeah, we've um, it's just kicked in today, actually. The wind's just picked up and it's just dropped degrees. So um, it's a bit chilly. So I've Yuck. got the heater on. Uh, I haven't got a puffy jacket on. Usually the puffy jacket is a good indication of how cold it is. I know. I'm, I'm unbranded, so I'm going to have to... There we go. No North, no north Face? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> No, uh, this is from the Red Circle Boutique. Oh, should I know what that is? Tarjay. Oh, is that what the... I never knew Tarjay was the Red, the red Circle one. Boutique? No, I haven't heard that I've one. heard of Tarjay, but I never knew that one. That was good. Uh, so, uh, welcome everyone, as I say, to episode eight. I'd like to really thank everyone for um, listening, for liking, subscribing, giving us the thumbs up, leaving comments on the YouTube channel, and also... Uh, commenting on Podbean, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, all of them. It's been great. We're getting a lot of um, a lot of people tuning in, which has been a pleasant surprise, I must say. Um, 150 subscribers, close to. Is that right? Uh, yeah, close to. I think we're sort of we're scraping 130, 140 ish, which yep. uh, on on YouTube channel, which is awesome. Yep. Um, it'd be good to get some more people listening to the podcast. I reckon that'd be great. Yep. So if, you, if you're listening on this podcast and you, you haven't fallen asleep after the first 40 minutes or so, make sure you share it to your mates. Make sure you link it somewhere or tell your mates about a photography podcast about two guys talking about photography. Um, the more people listen, the more ideas we get and the more we can sort of get our, our thoughts out to everyone. And yeah, it's good. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we got a bit of a kick out of doing the live show on Sunday night. Yeah, Thanks to that was good fun. everyone for tuning into that. And again, uh, everyone for interact, interacting with us as well. That was fantastic. We, yeah. we really fed off it. Um, when the questions come in, it's, it's great. We like, we like chatting photography and it's good for someone else to come up with the topics instead of just us. But uh, no, yeah. it was awesome. We really enjoyed that. That was we, we got off that with a bit of a high, didn't we? We we had a lot of fun, and we you know we had fun, and that's the main thing. But I, I, it seemed like a lot of other people tuning in also had fun, and we had some uh, like I said some great questions and really good interaction, which is what we really want this show to be all about: is you guys interacting with us and getting us some topics to talk about, or if you've got questions and things like that. So keep firing away; it's it's awesome. Absolutely, and if there is um, one particular thing you want us to talk about, send us an email, send us a. A little comment or whatever and we'll work it into next week's show or the week after or the week after that <coughs> um so a lot been going on uh here in victoria um mm -hmm. we've come out of lockdown as of eleven fifty nine p.m last night which was great yeah big woohoo actually yeah. it's been really really good to be able to get um both of my shops back up and running again and seeing yeah customers through the door <laughs> that's been great yeah because uh, i think food it, on the plate Yes, all that, making ends meet mm. and getting face-to-face um, uh, -face contact with customers is, is vital. I think we've just been through lockdown yeah. 5.0 here in Victoria and um, although we moved a lot of our stuff online, which has been fine, um, we also uh, saw a bit of a drop-off this time around for online sales. So it was great to see people back. Yeah, okay. Face to face, face to face is how it works for us. So, um, mm. really, really excited to be back open. Um, so, yeah, it was a it was a great day for us today. Yeah, that's good, and, and that's just a basic human need, isn't it? Face to face interaction. It's, it seems funny, but just having people walk in your shop, I'm sure, if they're buying things, it makes you feel better. But just having that face to face interaction with customers, that's got to be a good feeling. So, I'm, I'm happy for you. It's um, I'm still in number. I'm in day day ten, I think, of lockdown or quarantine. I got a sneaky feeling we're going to get out for good behaviour early though. Yeah. <clears throat> so maybe. Well, I hope you do, and well done to you for sticking it out because yeah. um, you know when people do the right thing, uh, this yes. whole joint, this whole show keeps on rolling, right? Yeah. And you've seen what's below my desk level here with my pajamas still on. So I've literally been in my pajamas for ten, eleven days straight. <laughs> I'm not embar I'm not embarrassed about it. <clears throat> um, if anything, it's just encouraged me just to stay at home and. Uh, we've done lots of things. So yeah, we're, we're hoping to get out on the weekend and uh, move into next week and hopefully everyone else around Australia who's in lockdown, New South Wales just got advised another four weeks today, but hopefully that's the last four weeks they have to worry about. So if you're in New South Wales, um, we'd, uh, we'd like to pass our best wishes on to everyone, I guess, and, and just say stick to it. If you need to 
let, let some steam off. Feel free to send us some questions or topics that you may want us to touch on or um, or if this is just helping you get through, then that's awesome. Yeah, we can, um, we can teach you how to take photos of bowls of fruit. Yeah, well, there's a lot of things you can do in lockdown. Like there's a lot like little depth of field projects and um, black and white and texture things and abstract things. There's so much around your backyard and house. Yeah, you'd be um, surprised you act- um, yeah. at just how creative you can get when you're um, sort of limited to, by space, I suppose, limited to one area. Mm. Uh, you'll yeah, probably right. start to see things in a different light, so to speak, and also probably start to see things in a different way and, you know, yeah. take a few photos and show your partner and say, hey, did you know that this was in our backyard? <laughs> yeah, yeah. When did you buy that? <laughs> yeah, that, that's right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Seen that. Yeah. There. Um, mm-hmm. uh, one other quick thing I will mention uh, about my business was today um, I installed a brand new uh, printer, which was... Very, very exciting and a long, long time in the making because uh, the printer actually came out of Sydney, so everything was delayed and held up and rightly so. Uh, And I uh, ended up installing that today. Um, That's a photo printer. So when I say photo printer, it's not an oversized printer. It's actually quite the opposite. It's my, um, I sort of nickname it my coffee machine. It's it's, it's the one that... uh, Sort of pays the rent. It prints the little six by four photos right up to oh, yeah. about yeah. a twelve by eighteen inch photo, but it's yeah. the photo. It's the the printer that runs pretty much all day in my shop. So when people yeah. come in with their phone, for example, and want to get photos printed from their phone, it's the the printer we use to um, to print out those and supremely high quality prints at camera and photo. Um, the printer that we use is uh, basically manufactured by Epson. Yeah, uh, fantastic quality printer. So that was really cool. exciting to get. Mm. a quite expensive delivery and get it installed and get it happening are you one of those guys i'm a bit, a bit like me when i get a new toy um like a new camera or something like that i like i always remember the first photo i take on a new camera or the first <laughs> print i've done off a printer or are you a bit like that with your new printer like you're like that's i'm going to print one of mine off first just to make sure it looks awesome yeah <clears throat> and then go from there or? yeah i always always christen the printers with a couple of my photos first so yeah um, just to make yeah. sure um, and it never gets old. This is the fifth one I've installed. Um, yeah, I think fourth, fifth, something like that. And uh, yeah, you, it, you do get a little buzz when you when it yeah. all comes online and it all works because we've got a network at all. We've got photo printing kiosks in store. It's all going to be networked. All that's got to work. All the back end. Anyone who's listening that has run or knows anyone who runs a photo printing place will know of all the trials and tribulations I've been through today. Um, yeah. And so just just to clarify, the man who can't change his background or get to sixteen by nine aspect ratio mm-hmm. can install a network printer setup. I know that's amazing. Right? <laughs> that amazing. That's incredible. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> that's a miracle. I, I just figure, you know, if I give myself enough time and I click enough icons and buttons, and eventually it's got yeah. to work, right? So it'll uh, it'll it'll all sync up and work somehow. Yeah, and that and that's yeah. what happened. <laughs> nah, it was pretty easy today. We were literally switching over the old one and installing the new one, so it wasn't overly yeah. difficult. It was sort of like I don't know, changing a changing an air filter in a car or something. The old one goes yeah. out, the new one comes in. As long as you put it all back together again, it should work, right? So. Uh, Yep, as long as there's no parts left over, you're good. We were very, very happy that it worked out. Um, now, uh, what have you been up to this week, Cam? Uh, what have I been up to? Uh, not uh, much other than, since... Other than obviously being locked down, which we've already spoken about. I've been about. out shopping. I've been to Bunnings. I've been out for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Coles. I've been to the footy. Yeah. No, I haven't. Yeah. Um, oh, you for, you uh, forgot the most important place to go when you've got COVID. The air, The airport. Oh, I didn't go to the airport. Yeah, no, you've got to go oh, straight to the airport, apparently, when you... yeah. I'm still a rookie at this down in Tassie with COVID. <laughs> um, what have I been? I've been uh, today. I've actually been scanning. I've been scanning a heap of old uh, 35 mil slide films for a customer of mine, um, and it's been really good. Like there's some like this gentleman knows how to shoot pretty well, and um, there's some absolutely beautiful family photos in there and travel photos. So I've been living through his slides, and they're all these all were taken before I was born back in the, the 70s. So. Um, it's been good fun. So I've been using my Epson uh, V800 scanner. I think you've got one of those as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, cracking, cracking little scanning thing. So I've been doing that. Uh, and also we've just been liaising with a, a bride. I've got a, f- a photo shoot at Cradle Mountain uh, early next week. Uh, so just been liaising with her on running sheets and where to be and what to do and where we're going to go and things like that. This so is actually their wedding. This is their wedding. So they're getting Fantastic. married at Cradle. Their, their wedding got postponed in December last year because of COVID. Um, so they rescheduled it. They were hoping for a snowy week in Cradle 
and I reckon they're going to hit the nail on the head because yeah. we're expecting snow Monday into Tuesday and the wedding's on Tuesday. So Oh, perfect. No, they'll be, they'll be <clears> totally... I'll, I'll jinx it right now and say that you're going to get plenty of snow. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's um, right. So that's that's just been doing that. That's really all this week. Just um, just being out, yeah, just staying at home and been doing lots of the kids have been doing lots of homework and nice things mate. like that. Nice. It's been good. Good. Well, at least so. you've been sort of um, still keeping in the field of photography even while you're in lockdown, and that's yeah, um, that's right. We we do a lot of scanning as well. It's great. I love scanning old, particularly the really old photos. The yeah, the the three by four, the smaller photos. I get I get a heap of those. Well, it's, it's great to see. I sp- I spoke to you today about uh, another customer had asked me about doing some old plate scans. Yes. Uh, glass plate scans. So that's happening. He's going to send those um, plates to me to have a bit of a play with. Yep. And then we, we might send the files up to you to print for us. Yeah. Um, so he's got about 40 odd square uh, pl- plates and they used to be used for postcards. So they, um, they used to make all the old postcards off these. So I'm really, really excited to get my hands on them and have a bit of a look. and. Yeah, and then uh, we'll, we'll get them up to you, and we'll print them on that new printer of yours to do some six um, four postcards. It, it's great when you see the old plates and you scan them because the irony of it all is they will actually probably be printed the best they've ever been printed, a hundred yeah. years after they were made. Yeah, that's right. You know, and they don't they don't lose resolution the glass ones either. Like it's no, that's right. They are pretty damn impressive. So, um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much my week. Um, Very cool. All right. Well. Yeah. This week, we thought we would uh, talk about a topic um, that I've had um, a bit to do with over the years, and I'm sure a lot of you out there listening have and have been curious about, and that is the big issue of copyright in terms of who owns your photos, what can people do with your photos, um, all that sort of stuff. Um, I've got a few stories, and I'm sure Cam has as well, about people using your photography without permission um it's it's a massive pain in the bum to be perfectly honest and um although some people see it as quite flattering when someone wants to use one of your photos it becomes it becomes quite a problem when they use your photo without asking you in particular when it happens to be a fairly big corporation as well if which has happened to me um it gets very very frustrating when these big companies worth squillions don't want to hand over money for your hard work so um mm, that's right yeah so and, and and cam i know you you were telling me today that you've had some issues surrounding instagram in particular yeah i'll i'll, uh, I'll get into that bit as well we've, i've had some I, I like you i've had images used without permission from anything from the mum and dad airbnb sort of accommodation mob up to uh, up to some pretty big uh government organizations as well they should know better um, but yeah, that's, it's a, it's a question I get asked quite a lot about, you know, how do you protect your work and how do you stop your work from being ripped off? And if it is ripped off, you know, what, what rights do you have and, and how do you address that? So I, I get regular emails. I reckon I get one a fortnight, maybe one a month, uh, asking me, oh, such and such has used this image of mine without permission. How should I go about it? And what should I do? So we thought we'd touch on that. Maybe you would give us some of our experience about what's happened to us and how we've handled it. I guess how the outcome was and then um, I guess we'll, we won't go into all the black and white boring bits of what you're actually legally allowed to do or not allowed to do but um, a couple of stories from us and a little bit of, a bit of advice might uh, go a long way for some people out there. Yeah and, and don't don't fall over now anyone but um, we actually did some research on this. Um, we, d- <laughs> we, well. we, we thought we better. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we've gone, well, um, Cam pointed me in the direction of uh, what, uh, copyright.org.au. We will link this below. So because it's, um, there's a particular PDF that you can download. It is 27 pages, so I'm not about to sit here and read the whole thing to you because that will be boring. But it's called Photographers and Copyright, and as I say, we will link it. But there are key points at the start of this which relate back to exactly what we wanted to talk about today in the in the podcast. Um, quick story of the probably the most recent. Um, oh, look, there's been there's been plenty of uh, of things that have happened to me, particularly social media when when Facebook took off. Um, a lot of people that came onto Facebook um, were probably a little bit naive when it came to the use of photographs, in particular um, things like groups, um, sporting groups, um, community notice boards, which it seems like every town in Australia now has a community notice board on social media. Uh, yeah. I know Ocean Grove certainly does. Um, and early days when that 
um, started off. Uh, the person who started the page decided it was okay just to grab one of my photos straight off my website and use it as the banner across the yeah. top, with, which didn't annoy me that much except for the fact that they didn't say who took the photo. Um, yeah. Now, that, that I think <clears throat> is what you know, annoys me the most is when you get zero credit. Money's one thing um, when it's used for... You know, for literally for advertising, which makes them money and not getting yeah. paid for it, but just not even getting a credit where someone has said, by the way, this photo is taken by Brendan Waits from Ocean Grove Camera and Photo and a little link to the website. That's all you need to do. Yeah. Um, or, you know, first of all, ask my permission. That would be nice yeah. too. <laughs> but did, 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 didn't you know that photography now is um, a currency? Didn't you realize that, that you, you, your, your photography is worth its weight in gold? You don't, they don't have to pay as long as, um, you know, it's, it's a photo they can use um, and they can get some running, they can get some run with it yep. and they can get some advertising for it and not have to credit you and things like that. So, um, yeah, that little scenario, that, that happens a lot. And, um, and I, I put it down to two things, with, especially with social media. I put it down to two things. One, it's, it's just naivety with people running small businesses or community pages or, or what you know groups or whatever it might be just not understanding what they're doing is wrong and then on the other on the flip side of that i think there's also a little bit of just stubbornness and uh disrespect for artists in general where they think oh you've just taken a photo of that bridge behind you you know, you know i'll just i'll use it i like it so yeah. you know, I'm, I'm not doing anything wrong it's just a photo it's not it's not like i've stolen you know, a, a guitar out of your shop or, you yeah. know, a camera out of your shop or something like that. So. Yeah, that's right. I, I think you hit the nail on the head there. It is, it's too easy to steal it, mm. isn't it? It's too easy. It's right click, save image yeah. as, and, and away you go. I mean, I'm not giving yeah. you any secrets there. And, and I think you're right as well when you say, for example, the image that's behind me for you guys watching, I've got a photo of the two bridges of Bowen Heads behind me. I mean, that those, those bridges are in public domain, sure. Anyone can go down mm. and take a photo of them, but they didn't. I did. I went down yeah. there at sunrise and froze and got that photo, you know. So and and I worked hard to get that photo, and that's my intellectual yeah. property. So it does it does really um, annoy me when people don't follow the correct procedure. And the very first procedure that you should follow if you want to use someone else's photo is ask them. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's common yeah. courtesy more than anything, isn't it? Yeah, it is, um, and that's where I find it. Um it just gets frustrating where, um, like I, I've gone, I went through a stage where I had loads of images. People were just sort of sending me messages saying, oh, you know, did you see such and such had your image here or image there? And I got, I got past a point of trying to be polite when asking people if they would remove my photo because sometimes you'd email people and they, they wouldn't respond or they would just, you know, shrug it off as nothing or they'd get cheeky and say, oh, it's just a, just a photo, it's nothing special or whatever. Um, so... Yeah, it can, it can get definitely annoying. And like you said, you're the one putting the effort in. You're the one who's invested in all the ca camera gear and the experience and the time and the location and whatever. And and then to have your photo just plastered on someone else's web page or Facebook banner or even worse, you know, we had an, an episode where we, uh, down here where we had our images being um, advertised on the Hobart Airport billboard mm. without permission, mm. um, which became an absolute mecca issue yeah. um it became an issue across it got a lot of national attention about what was going on down here but um yeah like i said the, the easiest thing for people to do is just send an email or send a private message to say hey do you mind if i use that and i think you'd find most photographers will go yeah that's fine and if it's not for a big company yeah. or yeah. something massive if it's just for a community page i think most people are okay with that yeah well i mean um, I'm, I'm i'm happy for the exposure and then you you can say, well, well, what's the problem then? If you're happy with exposure, well, the problem is you very what's rarely the problem, get <laughs> you probably you you pretty much very rarely get credited yeah. with the image in the first place. So if there's That's no right. if there's no link back to you, then yeah. you know it's all for nothing. So well, yeah, well, as well, I say, that, 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 with uh, sorry with with community notice yeah. boards and the like, and community groups in general, more than happy to support people. But again, mm. just ask. Yeah, and I think that word you just used there as well, link. It, it actually becomes a very, very important word when you're talking about copyright and use of images, especially on social media. So, for example, with um, the issue we had down here where the Hobart Airport had a billboard, uh, it wasn't run by Hobart Airport, it was actually streaming from Instagram um, through the department down here. Um, and they their, their defense to that was that 
if they were just running it off the Instagram program. But one of the major things that people need to understand is that if your images are getting shared around, to make it fair and equitable for the artist, the photographer in this situation, there needs to be a clickable link back to your work. Because like you said, if there's no clickable link to your website or your Instagram account or whatever it may be where they got that image from, there's no way that people can trace that back to you, can buy that image through you, can also license that image from you. So that's one of the big things that came out of the, the issue we had down in Tasmania here was that there was no clickable link for anyone to get back to my work and everyone else's work that was used on that billboard. Now that billboard was a, a very expensive billboard to run. It was paid advertising. Um, they were making money out of it. Everyone, everyone involved was making money out of that billboard apart from the people whose images were drawing everyone to that billboard and to the locations where they were making money from. So yeah, that, that word link is very, very important. So if you're listening to this and you're not actually a photographer, but you you know, you know enjoy photography and, and you might think, oh, I'd love to put Brendan or Cam's photo on my banner or page or something like that. No problems if you're asked to do that, but there also needs to be a clickable link. You know, as, as you would see where a lot of posts on Facebook have the clickable Cam Blake photography or camera and photo link, where it takes you back to that page. And that's, if anything, that's a small dividend for us that someone goes to our website or our shop or whatever and has a look at that image. But when that's not there, it, it's it's practically useless for us to, for that image to be out there when there's no no recourse for any you know money to be made really. Yeah, that that's exactly right. And and I think the issue is is one of ignorance, uh, <coughs> ignorance of the law mainly. Um, yeah. You know, people not knowing exactly what the right course of action is. But um, you're exactly right. That it, it has to it has to be not only attributed to the photographer, but it has to also give that photographer an avenue so that clickable yeah. link back to getting so that that person who looks at that photo and goes wow what a gorgeous photo they yeah. actually can find out who took it and maybe buy one for themselves or yeah you know, talk to the That's photographer right. about using it in their advertising campaign or something like that so or you know open up open up the world of their rest of their gallery you know there might be someone who sees an, an image of yours and goes gee it's a nice shot i wonder what else they've got i don't know i can't i can't click and look all i can do is look at the one image but I think on the flip side of that as well, which is probably the second part of our discussion to a point, uh, not moving on just yet, but in regards to um, if you do sell your images and if you do license your images out to a business or company or whatever it might be, just exactly what your rights and licensing and copyright laws are in regards to that. So um, my advice to people is if you're getting approached by businesses and they want you to sign like a license agreement or a release form, definitely read that fine print really really well and i can tell you an example of another photographer i know who's based in sydney i think they had an image that they licensed to and i'm not having any digs at any anybody at all about this but they they licensed their image down here legitimately they were paid the whole thing not a problem they were fine with that with the whole setup but what they didn't realize in the fine print of that was that at the time had the rights to license that image as did every other tourism board in australia and that ended up being on a massive billboard, a Tassie image on a massive billboard in Sydney. And this poor photographer got paid a couple hundred bucks for the image and it went Australia wide um, on massive billboards, which if he, if he knew or if he understood the rights of what he was signing, he probably could have asked a lot, lot more money for his image. So if you're getting license requests, just make sure you read them with a fine tooth comb because there's always something in there that benefits them and not necessarily the artist as much. Yeah, and, and also to that end as well, um, <clears throat> not so much when it comes to people, uh, companies, community organisations, that sort of stuff, using your images. But also on the other side of that is when you get, um, and it's happened, <laughs> it's happened in quite a couple of very funny ways for me at, at my shop, um, where people have come in with photos on their phone that they want me to print and they, I know full well that they are from local uh, landscape uh, photographers okay. here in Ocean Grove. Um, right. That's where it gets really tricky because um, all mm -hmm. they've done is a screenshot. Now, yeah. of course, the first thing I tell them is, you can't use that photo. I know who took it and it's not yours, so I'm not allowed to print it for you. It's protected by copyright. And the other thing mm -hmm. I point out to them is it's a screenshot. So yeah. it's not going to print very well anyway. It might look great Crap on your it. tiny yeah. little phone screen, but if you want to make that big, you know, 40 inch canvas yeah. out of it, it's going to look terrible. By the way, yeah. here's the name of the photographer. How about you give them a call and see if you can buy one off them? Yeah. <laughs> so do you, do you find that's linked to just 
ignorance in 100%, regards to that? A hundred percent. Yeah, it is. Agree. It, it's, yeah. it's ignorance. It's not. It's. Um, you know, it's nothing. There's nothing malicious about it. Quite often, it's, it's people who just, I love this photo. I'd love to put it on my wall. So they just, yeah. Even though they've probably been on a website that's got buy a photo here, or you know, they just don't. Yeah. They don't put the two together, and you know, I, I guess yeah, people. It just takes a bit of um, bit of education for people. Yeah. Um, the the best one, Cam, was uh, I had. Uh, a lady wander into my shop and it was back when we weren't transferring via Wi-Fi. We were just plugging your iPhone in with the cable. Oh, yeah. yeah. She plugged her iPhone in and up came a screen of all my photos. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. she's tapped on a couple and she said, oh, I want to get this printed in this camp size. And I said, you mean like this one? And pointed <laughs> And I said, yeah, they're actually my photos. And uh, yeah, yeah well. uh, look, it was a really awkward moment. I didn't want to make her feel terrible, but I had to point out yeah. the fact that, yeah, they're right here for sale. You can buy them Yeah, here. Um, She was quite embarrassed. And, and like you said, it's just, it's just got to go to pure ignorance, like just not realizing what they've done yeah. a mistake. Oh, or, that's right. you know, and, and I think a lot of it comes back to it. And you, you might hear over the next, you know, over the, as this show evolves, I have a love-hate relationship with social media. I think it plays a super important part for photographers, but I think it also has totally devalued our industry as artists as well because I think what a lot of people would do, like you said, that lady probably went to your website and saw, oh, gee, I love that shot of the bouncing kangaroo through the water. Oh, it's X amount of hundreds of dollars to print that. Oh, I'm not going to, that's not worth, I'm not going to pay that much for that. Having said that though, She'll go and she would have gone out and bought hundred dollars worth of clothing, or you know, a hundred dollars worth of something else that someone's produced and, and right. created. That, that, that is that is exactly right. You've hit the nail yeah. right on the head there. It's um, and I think that comes back to it's just too easy to copy a photo off the internet. Yeah, and there's, and, but I, I, and there's no there's yeah. no spending needed when you do that. There, there's not. Like I said, it's so easy. Right click, save as. But I think what. Um, what what's been lacking over the last few years, I think, is um, there's a lot of people getting into photography, and again, we would never frown upon the photography industry growing with people. But what I think there is that there's a the percentage of people that are getting in to make a quick buck, and and a lot of those people are just literally giving away images or sharing images for nothing and just sending images to businesses saying, "Here, you can use that for free," and that's created a bit of a, a catch twenty two where, you know, if a business has had the last you know six banners on their Facebook page for free. And they see something that they like of ours or someone else who's a professional photographer and they just use it they think well i've done it for the last six what's it matter here yeah so i think we're our own worst enemy in a way and i think social media has helped sort of push that social media is like the pimp and we're, we're really just prostituting our work out there in a way because it's just it's not the way to do business and photograph photographs itself have just lost value um which is a real shame because you know, it's harder and harder and harder to make a buck off selling photos these days. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, I suppose the counter to that, and the, and this is really all I can come up with as we're rolling through, but the counter to that is the best photographers will still, I think, rise above and will still yeah. you know, be able to more than happily survive and, 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 and sell their prints and that sort of stuff. Uh, and, and you're right, it is a catch-22 because... They put their work on their website to attract business, but that also attracts the people who pick off yeah. their shots. So it's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and and yeah, we could 100%. we could go on. I've uh, one other quick example I'll give you is um, so a good friend of mine was flying down to visit me uh, from Queensland uh, on a particular airline, and he was thumbing <laughs> thumbing through the in-flight magazine of this particular airline, and lo and behold, here's Brendan's kangaroo hopping through the water photo um on page 37 and i remember this happening yeah without one word of who took the photo um my name was not attributed anywhere um and maybe it's in the tourism uh word because it was this was decided that uh and that photo was taken up uh in in the noosa heads area and um yeah yeah they, they decided that they would yeah, they just help themselves, and um, they didn't get the right permissions, and they um, sent it over to this uh, airline's in-flight magazine, who just went and published it because they assumed <laughs> they got all the right clearances for it, which they hadn't. So, yeah, that, that was, was that was what really was, really frustrating. What was the outcome of that? Because I remember that happening. I don't remember what the outcome was. Uh, the, did that get did that get settled properly or? Um, not yet. Not yet. We can leave it okay. at that. 
<laughs> Due to legal requirements, I can't say anything else. Uh, um, yeah, look, it, it, my main thrust was to stop them doing it anymore because they were actually, this was about their yeah. fourth offence with my stuff. Right. Uh, maybe even more than that and I just had enough so um, yeah anyway I, I I sought legal advice and it yeah. hasn't happened since uh, yeah. we can leave it at that for now um, so, so how do you find first class these days is it good? <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I, I wish it wasn't no. quite like that but uh, well, yeah I was, well, I, I've, just... I've actually for posterity I got a copy of the magazine sent to me <laughs> that's good well that's funny that's one thing I think is also important in regards to this whole copyright and sharing images and this is something I learned through the little example we had down here in Tasmania a few years ago but people on Instagram and especially Instagram always Instagram um, <laughs> hashtagging hashtagging or, or tagging certain things into certain people and businesses into your photos you actually give them an underlying permission to reuse that image on the same platform in, I'm paraphrasing what the terms and conditions say. Right. But if, for example, if for example, I uh, I tag camera and photo, the the Cradle Mountain shop behind me on my screen. For those at home, if I tag camera and photo, you, I, I, I inadvertently through Instagram, give you right to share that through your accounts, and you can you can use that and reshare it and re rehash it. So the hashtag itself actually works as a permission stamp, yeah, we, in which a way. which I'm assuming then opens that little can of worms where. They can use it. They can share it on the same platform, and then all of a sudden, they yeah. think, "Well, we can run it with that little advertisement as well." Well, I think that's where the people get themselves in a bit of a knot. Is that they say, "Well, they've, they've tagged this in that. Um, well, that means I can use it there." Um, <clears throat> what what a lot of them do now, a classic one, is that they will now message you and say, "If you are okay with me using this photo on our social channels, please hashtag yes Hobart or yes you know yes Jetstar or whatever it might be." And that then gives them permission to reshare it on their on their channels, but um, but just be careful with that because people people hashtag to try and get people drawn into that shot or that location or whatever it means. But you're also then giving permission to you know and the, the argument we had down here, and we actually got a retired. I was telling you the other day about it, we had a retired uh, QC in intellectual property and law uh, who came down to Hobart to meet with us and and potentially represent us um, at the time. Uh, and they they mentioned that um, you know where is the law that says that person owns the hashtag? So where where where, where does it become a point where a hashtag becomes a signed document saying yes you can share my image or have some sort of licensing to reshare my imaging? So be be all I would suggest for people that use uh, social social media heavily with their images, just just go and actually have a good read of the terms and conditions of Instagram, and I mean fine tooth comb them because there is some very interesting. Term, terminology and, and sections of that um, the, the, what what Instagram can do when I mean, Instagram is now owned by Facebook so you can put two and two together how that works but yeah, which it's also a, it's a, um, sort of in a roundabout sort of way brings me to the <laughs> to the topic of watermarking um, <laughs> uh, we yeah. won't go into it too far but uh, geez you see some wonderful photos absolutely destroyed by horrible watermarks <laughs> yeah <laughs> which yeah. is a shame because they're just trying to protect their work i get that but uh yeah yeah it's 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 again a catch-22 isn't it you you know you see a great photo but then it's got this big photography by you know splashed across the front of it and they're just doing that to protect themselves um yeah. but in ta in doing so they've taken away from the quality of their photo they have i i use a i use a little trick in my photos you know remember the old guy used to do the jeff hook used to do cartoons at the herald sun i do for that for those in melbourne the little cartoons used yes. to put a little hidden hook yes I, I actually i actually put a hidden watermark in every single shot of mine and i know where they are yeah because i know if that image gets shared around again or i see it online and someone says oh no it's not your shot i know it's mine because i've in, even though it's embedded in metadata i've even put another layer of, of security on it i guess yep in that situation yep. and, so, all, and all you have to do is zoom in that's it and then you yeah. can see yeah no, it's, it's actually yeah. it's it's quite a good little tip um, mm. I've, I've done that myself as well um, just on occasion when I know I've got an image that's probably going to be shared around um, I'll yeah. just put the little camera and photo yeah. logo or the Brendan Waits photography on there or something like that but it's, that's a good yeah. one um, yeah. so just briefly um because of course our podcast is already going forever and we're good at <laughs> prattling on um <laughs> I just wanted to go through a few of the, 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 the major points with photographers and copyright. And again, this is from copyright.org.au. Um, 
and and it was funny because I, I thought I knew about copyright and it's been a while since I've looked at it, but you know, here's a couple mm. of points here that I wasn't aware of. First of all, generally, copyright in photos lasts for the life of the creator plus 70 years. Did you know that, Cam? I knew it was, plus, I thought it was plus 40 or plus 50, but I knew I knew it was well after we were gone that we still had some copyright because I think that transfers into the, the estate or the family or something. If yeah, well, that, that'd be interesting. Like I, a big deal. Yeah, I would assume that you would have to um, have a special caveat put on your photo to say, no, 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 we're, mm. we're, we're going more than 70 years. This stays in my family trust in per, per, yeah. perpetuity, perpetuity, perpetuity. That's probably the biggest word we've used on this podcast. Get your, get your tongue around that one. That's a beauty. Um, uh, point number two, copyright has expired in photos taken prior to the 1st of January 1955. Now, yeah, that, that one. sounds really broad, um, mm. which kind of... I, I wasn't aware of that. Um, yeah. So a, any photo that was taken before the 1st of January 1955, and I'm assuming this is in Australia, now doesn't have copyright. Yeah. And that, and that, I think that plays into that seventy-year rule a bit as well, because that'd be seventy years since they're done. Correct. It's now, um, yeah, it's seventy years yeah, now since that. Well, roughly or, or, since that date. Almost seventy years. Yep. But yeah, I think, um, yeah, that's interesting. Mm. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another point here: ownership of a photo varies depending on the circumstances under which it was taken. Now, how broad? How how vague is that? Well, yes, <laughs> that, uh, there, there was a classic. There was a classic case of something that along those lines and it happened I think it happened down here in Tassie in regards to the dark mofo yes where people were taking photos of the art yes so dark mofo for those listening at home is a, a winter festival in Tassie here it goes for about a month and we get some incredibly interesting art locations and uh, lighting displays and all these different things that happen but they're all considered art and I think there was some issue in regards to people taking photos of the art but then selling the photo of someone else's art and yeah. I think that's where yeah so you're no longer it. selling a photo are you you're selling the art you're selling you're selling you're selling someone's art and that's why when you go to a lot of museums or a lot of places like that they say no photos yeah um, there's a really beautiful place down here in the middle of Tassie called the wall uh, it's a hundred meters wood carving this guy has spent years and years and years carving the history of Australia in this wood it's it's, it's brilliant but there is a strict no photograph policy you cannot take phones. You cannot take, you cannot take your phone out. You cannot take a camera. There is zero photos, and purely it's just it's to preserve the, I guess his intellectual property, um, and that that's his bread and butter. People yep. pay to go and see this. Yeah, and, and pl- um, for a local uh, example, close to well in Victoria is the Silo Art Trail. Um, same yes, it is. same deal. Mm. Um, yeah. The artwork on the silos is absolutely brilliant, and I recommend. Everyone get there. You can take photos of it. That's fine. You just can't sell those images. So, um, which is completely understandable. So, yeah. and I've taken some absolute crackers of those silos, and I'd love to be able to sell them because I know that yeah. would sell, but I'm not allowed to, yeah. so I don't. And that's that's that. Would, would, wouldn't that just be the greatest case of hypocrisy ever, though? If you were complaining about people stealing your photos and selling them, but then you went and took a photo of someone's artwork mm. and sold it, and then got your knickers in a knot because of it yeah, so yeah. it's all about respecting the artist no, that's, that's exactly right that, as it comes down to yeah um and now this is this is one well just just on that last point as well uh ownership of a photo varies depending on the circumstances under which it was taken well that obviously goes back to the, if you were employed by someone to take that photo yes. they own that photo not you so yes uh, if you've been commissioned to do a photograph then that's a di- yeah. completely different kettle of fish and so that, 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 that's one thing that I make sure if I get commissioned to do work for someone, I, I make it well known and have it written into any licensing that I actually still own the copyright of that image. Yep. And, I, and I'm allowed to use that image for my own profits as well. Uh, and most people are okay with that. Um, I haven't had anyone, anyone sort of stum their nose up at that yet. So, yep, good. yeah, good. Um, which. Mm and then this will be the last point I'll bring up on it, but you will not own copyright just because you own the camera. So mm, that, I, didn't, I didn't read that one. Yeah, I didn't see that one. Yeah, so which, which basically also means if you are working for someone else or, and it's interesting because I guess that also means, you know, if someone picks up your camera and takes a photo, who, yeah. who owns the copyright? And there was that famous example. Uh, and I wonder, <laughs> you know where I'm going with this? 
No, but I've got a story that's similar, I think. There, there was a famous example. I th- look, I'm not sure. I don't think it was in Australia. I think it was somewhere else where um, a monkey took a photo of himself. <laughs> I wasn't going there. No, have you heard this? this is, uh, <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm gonna, if a clever YouTube editor will put the photo on the screen, but apparently a monkey... Um, so there was a guy taking photos in some kind of monkey enclosure or a zoo or somewhere like that. Right. A monkey um, put himself in front of the camera and was playing with the top of the camera and pushed the button and took a photo of himself. The yeah. guy then entered that in a competition. It won. And then the zoo where he took the photo sued him and said, you didn't take that photo. A monkey did. And they really? won. <laughs> That's incredible. I guess, though, the uniqueness of that photo um, would have sparked the judges or the competitions. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I had a story and it was not long ago I was up in Bright doing my autumn workshop this year and there's this beautiful avenue of trees out in the Buckland Valley beautiful. it was just stunning really really nice and I had my group there and we had our tripod set up and it's a it's a public road so people drive up and down which is fine and this lovely young lady came uh, up the road um, and she started taking photos and things like that and straight away I could tell she was either a blogger or an Instagrammer just the way she was doing things and stuff like that so she was running down this avenue and twirling her dress and getting those beautiful autumn late afternoon shots and anyway she kept coming back to her camera and checking and then going down and coming back and checking and it was sort of getting in our way a bit but you know that's a free world but I said to her I said do you want me just to take the photos of you running down so I so you can get the timing of your swirling your dress right and things like that and I can focus on you as you're going along she goes oh that'd be great that'd be really good so I did that and I had the tracking focus on her and did a few shots and she came back she goes yeah great I said yeah I'll send you a bill <laughs> because I'd, I'd literally taken the photos yeah, for it yeah. and she just gave me this sort of blank look I'm like well technically you know, that's where, and, that, and that's where I left it yeah, but yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's a it's not a monkey story but you know no that's right and there's, there's, there's a lot of, and this is the thing it's a very very grey area with copyright and, yeah. and I guess at the end of the day people don't know where they properly stand. So as I say, we'll put a mm. link to that PDF below, Photographers yeah, and Copyright, because uh, yeah. I think a lot of people would like to have a bit of a look over that. And, uh, yeah. you know, maybe uh, particularly people who are looking to start making a bit of coin from their photos, uh, have a good look yeah. at that. Um, one, one last sort of little anecdote story. Uh, as you know, Cam, I used to um, sell my photos at market stalls all the time. Yes. Um, in fact, it's where I got my start in selling photography. In fact, you and I ran a market stall together once in Greensboro. How'd that go? Yeah, that was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I think we I, I think we sold a kangaroo hopping across the lake. Uh, <laughs> I, think we did. I think that was about it. And uh, of course, I used to have my photos, you know, on display, big prints, mm. framed canvas prints, and it would literally be once or twice a market where I would have to ask people not to take photos of my photos. They were clearly yeah. just getting a freebie. They were just standing there and holding yeah. their phone up and framing it up and taking a snap of it, and it was just like. Can, can't you see why I might be a little bit uncomfortable with that? And again, it's just, like I said, this comes back to that that ignorance thing, and I think just people not thinking. No, that's and right. you know, one, one, once is a mistake, twice is you're you're an idiot, three times it's get out of my store. <laughs> so pretty much. Yeah. Um, but I think what I'll do, I'll, I'll wrap up this topic by just saying to people, and maybe a bit of a disclaimer for us as well, is that we're certainly nowhere near any level of expertise in copyright or intellectual property. We are not lawyers. Like we are not lawyers, we're not solicitors. We're, we're only giving you advice based on our own experiences. But if you do have any issues or concerns, definitely what the link will put in, definitely have a read of that. Uh, and if you need to go further, then you obviously need to speak directly to your, your legal representation. Uh, there is a lot of free sort of copyright and intellectual property uh, contacts in legal uh, fields you can contact. But yeah, I'll, I'm just pretty much putting a cover on our backsides that we're not legally responsible for anything we've said here no today. we're not and I'm already thinking that in the edit I'm going to bleep out the names of the people that we said because I don't think we we're supposed to do that but anyway we'll see well it's all it's all public record yes well, that's good. true exactly but we let's bleep them out anyway. yeah. <laughs> great there's some, there's some work for me to do um, so um, we didn't get a uh, dear Cam question this week, Cameron. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. I think we had a quota on the live. Well, we did. Time. That's true. We had plenty of yeah. questions coming through yeah, on that. And to that end, I think in a couple of weeks' time, we will do another live Sunday night session. Yeah. Cam, you're up for that? I loved it. Yeah, I think it was, it was cool. good. And I think I think we can smash our record number of viewers too. Yep, yep. Uh, now, um, Cam, you've want to touch a little bit on the upcoming yeah, just a little, Festival of Photography. 
Yeah, just a little bit of a quick update, and I'm by, by no means am I running this festival. I'm just I'm just involved as an instructor. But I was listening to another great photography uh, podcast, the Matt and uh, Matt and Tom Ex- Excellent Adventure podcast, which is Matt Crummins and Tom Putt. Um, they do crap on more than us, which is a surprise. Not possible. Um, it, it is possible, and they do it quite well. But I was listening to their latest episode, and, uh, and Matt made a bit of an announcement about this year's Bright Festival of Photography, most likely going to be a, a full online uh, festival to a point, but maybe a tweak where Victorians can maybe go out to certain locations and meet and do a few things. So for guys are listening to our podcast who might be going to that BFOP uh, arrangement, Make sure you look out for an email. I think they're going to send an email with an update, but it looks like it's going to be not an in-person thing, unfortunately, up in Bright, which is a shame, uh, but it might be a bit more of a, a different take on things. And for those who may, I get a lot of questions still about the Tasmanian Photography Festival that I was going to put on. At the moment, uh, it's not going to run ahead in April 2022. It's just too unsure of what's going on. Every time you try and organise something, someone locks down. So um, if that gets up and going again, then definitely we'll let everyone know. Yeah, it's. Uh, I know the the Taz Photo Fest is something close to your heart and something you've been trying to get off the ground mm. for a couple of years. So it's been, it's, and I know you've put a lot of work into it. So it's a, it is a real bummer, not only for mm. you but also for the people who want to come along to something like that. Um, yeah, times in which we live, I guess. So um, yeah. what one one day it'll happen. Yeah, for mm. sure. So um, thanks for the update on those. Um, cool. So now we get to the point where Cam, you just want to talk a little bit about your workshops. Uh, I noticed your Flinders Rangers workshop go up on your yeah. website. How exciting! It that did. looks awesome. It is exciting. Um, so that's up there. I put I'm putting two workshops on up, one in June next year and one in September next year. Um, all the details are on my website. Um, but the first one, which is the June one, June th- uh, thirteen to eighteen or nineteen, I think it is. Um, that's almost sold out so fantastic go people are super keen to get up there but the september one still has places the june one has a few places left but um definitely go check that out and i'm also getting a lot of questions at the moment about the tarkon workshop uh which is the northwest amazing corner Fun, of Tasmania. funny when you plug something <clears throat> incessantly on a podcast how you start getting inquiries on it you, should, you reckon it's like, like linked or <laughs> i don't know um but uh, that that's this month uh well actually next month well this month by the time you hear this um, August 27 uh, to 31. Uh, it looks like it's going to go ahead and I'm, I'm happy to go with just a couple of people. Uh, I just want to get out and do stuff and show people the Tarkine but if we can get a few more people on that that would be awesome as well. Uh, maybe you can come down for the weekend, Prince. Well, Take a weekend off. If I'm allowed to. That's it. Well, that's it. <laughs> Who knows. But that, that's all I've got to promote. What, uh, what have you got no. going on in the shop? Anything well, no, just, special just in the shop? Be- before, open, or? before you wrap up on your workshops, oh. I will be coming along to one of your workshops in some capacity at some point now whether or not that's helping you help people learn better photography great if yeah. I, I might even learn something who knows preferably that if you came along to help I'd rather not be there to, <laughs> to, to, hinder, well, to hinder I don't know mate I, 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 I get mm. I get the impression looking at your beautiful photos like the one behind you I'd probably be the doing be the one doing all the learning um mm. yeah no as, as i said earlier in the podcast we're we're back to business as usual at camera and photo which is fantastic uh the website is still mm. cranking camera and photo.com.au um we as i say got both our shots back up and running a little bit of news about the torquay store as well that is now back to six days a week so prior to lockdown we were closing on wednesdays we were just finding that everyone had a bit of lockdown fatigue and it wasn't yeah. sort of um firing on all the cylinders golf, but now that and, we're and, and the golf needed some updating uh golf was was on wednesdays that's <laughs> yeah that's, that's right um yeah which was nice for a while but now no 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 my my business needs me more than my handicap at the moment so we'll yeah, exactly. uh we are now open um uh, monday to friday 10 a.m to 5 p.m in torquay and uh, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on the Saturday in Torquay. So it's great. It's really good to get back in, as I said yeah. earlier, good to get back in that rhythm of, um, of, of talking yeah. to you lovely customers out there. Um, mm. So I think that might be it for our podcast tonight, Cam, uh, yeah, unless you've got so. anything else that you would like to add. No, I think, I think we've covered everything. Like I said, that copyright one's a, a really sort of tricky one to get into. And yep. uh, yeah, it, like it's said, an absolute it's a, it's a, minefield. I'm looking forward to the comments, yeah. actually. Yeah, and like like I said, just uh, just just know know where you stand with your images. You know, it is they are worth money. Um, 
just because you you know your beautiful photo should not just be worth a t-shirt that someone's going to swap you or whatever it is having said that i have swapped a lot of good things for some photos but you know know, know their worth and know your own worth and and just know what your rights are when you when people ask you to use your images. Very, very well put and a nice way to wrap up the podcast. Thanks, yeah. mate. Been lovely to chat with you tonight. We Thanks, will dude. see you for episode nine next week. Take care and see you all next time. Thanks, guys.